This is the Music History Today podcast for September 28th. On today's show, a new audio format is introduced, Miles Davis passes away, and Stevie Wonder releases a legendary album. First up, though, on this date in 1922, entertainer extraordinaire Mr. James Cagney married dancer Frances Vernon. In 1944, the first musical comedy shown on television, The Boys from Boise, premiered. In 1949, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis's first movie together, My Friend Irma, premiered. In 1956, it was announced by RCA Records that Elvis Presley had sold 10 million records. In 1963, a Beatles song was played on American radio for the first time when disc jockey Murray the K played She Loves You on a New York City radio station. In 1964, entertainer Connie Stevens' TV show Wendy and Me premiered on ABC. In 1968, Janis Joplin left Big Brother and The Holding Company. In 1970, the musical game show Words and Music premiered on television. In 1971, the New York Times ran a story about how white kids were beginning to listen to black gospel music. In 1972, David Bowie sold out his Ziggy Stardust tour stop at Carnegie Hall in New York City. In 1974, John Lennon was a guest disc jockey on New York City radio station WNEWFM. Also in 1974, Mick Ronson joined the group Mott the Hoople. In 1976, A&M Records sued George Harrison for not completing an album on time, even though George was sick with hepatitis at that time, and that was the reason why the album couldn't be completed in time. Go figure. Nice record label. In 1987, Elton John had a news story about him published in the British newspaper, slash tabloid really, called The Sun, which claimed that Elton had his dog's vocal cords removed so that the dogs couldn't bark. Elton sued the newspaper and won. In 1989, Jimmy Buffett became an author, publishing a book called Tales from Margaritaville. In 1991, Garth Brooks' album Rope in the Wind became the first country album to debut on Billboard magazine's album chart at number one. In 1992, the Bob Geldof-produced television show The Big Breakfast premiered on British television. In 1994, the man who was the inspiration for Sarah McLachlan's song, Possession, passed away from mental health issues. The song, for the record, is not a love song. It is a stalker song, much like the police's song, Every Breath You Take. In 1995, a car that Bobby Brown was riding in was shot at and attacked while in Boston, Massachusetts. The shooting killed Bobby's sister's fiancé. In 1997, the Audio Engineering Society made public the DVD audio format. In 2000, Barbara Streisand finished what was billed as her final tour, until her next final tour, which started in 2006. And in 2012, the music movie Pitch Perfect premiered in movie theaters. In classical music in 1984, Krzysztof Paderecki premiered the piece A Polish Requiem. In theater, in 1968, the Broadway show Happy Time closed. In 1992, Barry Manilow's Broadway show Showstoppers closed. And in 1994, the Broadway show Cats had its 5,000th performance. In award ceremonies that were held on September 28th, in 1990, Marvin Gaye posthumously received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Albums that were released on September 28th in the UK include in 1992 when Brian May released Back to the Light. Meanwhile in America, in 1973, Slade released Slatest and Status Quo released Hello. In 1976, Stevie Wonder released his legendary album, Songs in the Key of Life. In 1978, Black Sabbath released their last album with Ozzy Osbourne, Never Say Die. In 1983, Alice Cooper released Dada. In 1987, Depeche Mode released Music for the Masses. Alice Cooper released Raise Your Fist and Yell. And Wet, Wet, Wet released Popped In, Sold Out. 
In 1988, MC Hammer released Let's Get It Started. In 1993, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds released Live Seeds. The Police released Message in a Bottle, The Complete Recordings. That was a box set. And Paul Simon released Paul Simon 1964 to 1993. In 1998, PJ Harvey released Is This Desire. Depeche Mode released the singles 86 to 98. In 1999, Creed released Human Clay. Tony Bennett released Bennett Sings Ellington Hot and Cool. The Church released Under the Milky Way, The Best of the Church. The Indigo Girls released Come On Now Social. The Specials released Ghost Town Live. Sting released Brand New Day. And ZZ Top released Triple X, along with Garth Brooks, who released an album under his alias's name, Chris Gaines, which really didn't do all that well and led to a lot of controversy for no reason, really. I just remember it was very controversial. In 2004, the Buzzcocks released the Complete Singles Anthology, Melissa Etheridge released Lucky Live, Jerry Garcia Band released After Midnight, Keene College 2880, Iggy Pop released Ultimate Live, Mark Knopfler released Shangri-La, and Joss Stone released Mind, Body, and Soul. In 2009, Mariah Carey released Memoir of an Imperfect Angel, Slade released Live at the BBC, and Tina Turner released Tina Live. In 2010, Bad Religion released The Descent of Man, Jim Blossoms released No Chocolate Cake, Soundgarden released Telephantasm, The Doobie Brothers released World Gone Crazy, and Neil Young released Le Noise. And in 2018, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers released An American Treasure, and Cher released her ABBA cover album, Dancing Queen. Singles that were released in the UK on September 28th include in 1987 when Guns N' Roses released Welcome to the Jungle, and in 1992, The Talking Heads released Lifetime Piling Up. Meanwhile in America, in 1959, Brenda Lee released Sweet Nothings. In 1967, Gladys Knight and the Pips released their version of the song, I Heard It Through the Grapevine. In 1972, The Temptations released the single, Papa Was a Rolling Stone. Fun fact for you, the original song was 11 minutes and 46 seconds, but it had to be cut in half for the single's release because they couldn't get the full-length version onto a 45 RPM recording. In 1981, Olivia Newton-John released the best-selling song of the 1980s decade, Physical. Also in 1981, The Kinks released Destroyer, and The Human League released Open Your Heart. In 1996, Leanne Rimes released Unchained Melody. In 2004, Marilyn Manson released his version of Depeche Mode's song, Personal Jesus. And in 2018, DJ Snake released Taki Taki with Ozuna, Cardi B, and Selena Gomez. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 28th include singer and musician St. Vincent, the host of the Ed Sullivan TV variety show, Mr. Ed Sullivan, Hendry of NCT, rapper Jeezy, Singer and actress Hilary Duff, singer Moon Unit Zappa, rapper Q9, singer Trevor Daniel, singer Jenna Rose, singer Pedro Fernandez, singer Jennifer Rush, George Lynch of Dawkin, Kenny Burke of The Five Stair Steps, Peter Hope Evans of Medicine Head, Nick St. Nicholas of Steppenwolf, country music singer Tommy Collins, country music singer Mandy Barnett. Rapper Bushido, blues singer Coco Taylor, singer Ben E. King, 
Tuli Kupferberg of the Fugs, singer Helen Shapiro, Paul Burgess of 10CC, Norton Buffalo of the Steve Miller Band, singer Jim Diamond, keyboardist Kenny Kirkland, Melody Thornton of the Pussycat Dolls, and Ginger Fish of Marilyn Manson. Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 28th include composer Ottavio Vernizzi, who passed away in 1649 at the age of 79. Violinist Andrea Zani passed away in 1757 at the age of 60. Composer Carl Hack passed away in 1819 at the age of 68. Organist Johann Schwenke passed away in 1852 at the age of 60. Composer Jesus Monasterio passed away in 1903 at the age of 67. Composer Andres Jurgen passed away in 1922 at the age of 65. Conductor and composer Sylvain Dupree passed away in 1931 at the age of 74. Songwriter Con Conrad passed away in 1938 at the age of 48. Composer Francisco Santiago passed away in 1947 at the age of 58. Composer Paul Hastings Allen passed away in 1952 at the age of 68. Tuba player and artist Gerard Hoffnung passed away in 1959 at the age of 34. Composer George Dyson passed away in 1964 at the age of 81. Composer Nacio Brown passed away in 1964 at the age of 68. Singer Lucky Millinder passed away in 1966 at the age of 56. The first DJ to play an Elvis Presley song on air... Mr. Dewey Phillips passed away from heart issues in 1968 at the age of 42. Rory Storm of the group Rory Storm and the Hurricanes passed away from mental health issues in 1972 at the age of 34. Jazz legend Miles Davis passed away from pneumonia in 1991 at the age of 65. Jazz saxophonist Fraser McPherson passed away in 1993 at the age of 65. Singer Ermas Ellender passed away in 1994 at the age of 41. Folk musician Bob Gibson passed away in 1996 at the age of 64. Composer Victor Calabas passed away in 2006 at the age of 83. Opera singer Dolores Wilson passed away in 2010 at the age of 82. Singer Frankie Ford passed away in 2015 at the age of 76. The man nicknamed the Prince of Song, singer Jose Jose, passed away in 2019 at the age of 71. Conductor Frederick DeVries passed away in 2020 at the age of 91. Organist Dr. Lonnie Smith passed away in 2021 at the age of 79. Composer Carlisle Floyd passed away in 2021 at the age of 95. And rapper Coolio passed away from drug issues in 2022 at the age of 59. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 29th, when in 1991, MTV premiered Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit music video, and grunge music officially took over the mainstream. 